What's up gurus? So in today's video, we're going to talk about these guys, the dragon puffers. And we're going to talk about dragon puffer care in this video, how to take care of them, tips to caring for them and stuff like that. And then we'll move on to, uh, towards the end of the video, I'll be feeding them as well. So let's jump right in it. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you can comment below any questions you have, and also give us a subscribe. It also helps us a lot with motivation and such like that to give you guys better and better content every time we come out with another video. So hope you guys enjoy. I love these fish. So let's get into it. Dragon Puffer Care. As you can see, we got the Dragon Puffers here. Here's Draco, and then we have another one hiding in the back here. That one is called Puff. First things first is going to be temperature, of course. Temperature, you want to be sitting somewhere between the 75 to 82 range. Me, preferably, I shoot for about 78, 79 degrees, like smack dab in the middle. Also, for pH, you want to shoot a little low. You want to be somewhere between 6.5 and, and 7.5. And Me, personally, I shoot for smack dab in the middle at 7. By adding driftwood, almond leaves, and stuff like that, along with adding occasionally, I'll add a little bit of RO water just to kind of bring it down a little bit. I don't have many rocks in here for that reason. I don't want to crank it up too high. Hey Draco, you hungry? Came up for the camera for us, huh? But yeah, so other, other than that, um, other dragon puffer care you want to take care of um, is definitely caves. So as you can see here, we have two separate sides of the tank essentially with a blank spot in the middle. This allows Draco here to kind of claim one side and Puff over here to kind of claim the other side. Live plants is definitely a plus. They are an ambush predator. In the wild, what they do is they will actually hunt for fish and worms and crustaceans and stuff like that hiding in the bushes and they'll kind of ambush them to get at them. What we feed these guys is mostly a nightcrawler diet or worms. Um, occasionally I feed them tilapia. All right, so now that you've got the basics on the food, other dragon puffer care we're gonna take care of is having two of them in the same tank. Now this is possible, one, one dragon puffer alone should be fine in about a 30 gallon tank for most of its life. Two of them, you wanna shoot for 75 to 100 gallons, the more the merrier, of course. Just make sure you have lots of caves, lots of cover. I definitely need some more plants in here. The java ferns I've added in here, some of them didn't do so hot, so we'll have to figure a way around that. With heavy tannins in the water, it is hard to grow some plants in here. Anubia seems to work the best in my opinion. Dragon puffers are also known as humpback puffers, also known as pow palumbangensis. I can never get that one right, but they're a pow species, unlike uh, most puffers, which are in the, I believe it's a tetradon species. These ones here are less notorious for eating things that are hard, such as snails and such like that. They do eat uh, crustaceans in the wild, such as uh, shrimp, crabs. They don't necessarily need to. They don't, their teeth don't get elongated like most puffers do. A worm diet and a fish diet is highly recommended. So as I said, they are an ambush predator. So they do like to, you know, kind of hide before they attack. Obviously when I feed them worms and stuff like that, they'll come right up to the surface here and feed. As soon as they know I'm bringing worms to them, you'll see what I mean. Keeping two of them together, definitely not a bad idea. As you can tell, they're in good shape. We'll get some close-ups and stuff like that as well. Too. Other care things you want to make sure you do, sand substrate is highly recommended. They don't burrow like all puffers, but they will. So you want to give them the opportunity to be able to do so. Doing planted substrates is a bad idea. They will absolutely destroy the tank. As you can tell, Draco here is trying to head into his cave and figure out if I'm going to bring him some food or not. So we'll have to get them some worms here in just a second. The other thing you want to make sure you take care of is flow. Now these guys come from low flowing rivers and stuff like that in the wild. So you kind of want to keep the, the flow in here a little slow. That's why I run mine with air pumps, just air sponge filters. I try not to keep the flow too high in here. They definitely love to hide, as you can tell. And Puff hasn't, still hasn't came out to see us, but once they find out I got food for them, they'll definitely be out here playing with us. It's pretty simple. Truthfully, they're one of the easier puffers to take care of. Majority of them are gonna be wild caught when you get them, so they may be extremely shy to the point where they really won't come out. Obviously, feeding them with your hands and stuff like that encourages them to be more comfortable with you. That's one of the tips I use personally to you know, get them to do the stuff that they do. Where you can see like Draco will follow me here as he is hungry. Once he finds out I got food, he'll come after me, even my finger. Now, obviously, you don't want them to bite you. They still got teeth. So make sure you're careful of that. Digging in there, they do not like that. They tend to either panic or they will attack your hand. <laughs> so I kind of run, you know, I, I fight or flight on that. I just leave the tank, I leave them be. 
kind of let him go back to his caves. Another tip is you definitely want to have clean water. Clean water is a necessity with these puffers. If you do not constantly change the water in here, at least weekly, now me personally, I do 75% in here. They seem to be doing absolutely amazing. As you can see, Draco has more of a yellow pattern, whereas Puff, if he'll come out, or she'll come out, is more of a dark brown color. So they can kind of vary in colors. They are often confused with the Arrowhead Puffer, which, look, which looks kind of similar, as you can tell. And we'll get some more close-ups and talk more about that in just a second here. So let's get some close-ups here. So here we got Draco. He is pretty large. Um, these guys get anywhere from four to six inches, I've seen. Uh, Draco here, he's probably pushing four inches. Same thing with Puff back here, hiding in his little corners. But yeah, we'll get these guys some food here. Um, get you guys some feeding feeding video here as well. Like I said too, if you have any questions, make sure you shoot them down in the comments. Any other Dragon Puffer care tips you may have that I haven't said, definitely let us know. I'll try and catch them in the end of the video here, but man, I love these puffers. Look at that look. I love their eyes, how they just kind of wander around, always watching everything. Like I said, the, the Java Fern's not doing excellent. Is It, it is definitely spreading. Uh, I do have an Anubius plant back there. You can't really see it. It's definitely turning a lot more green. There's some uh, other stuff in here as well. We got some bulbitis right there, for example. Some smaller bulbitis in the back that is not doing too hot. Uh, same thing with that right there. And I thought for sure bulbitis would take off in here, but regardless, let's go grab some worms for this guy here and for Puff. All right, so as you see, we got some night crawlers in here. Draco's excited. So the reason I feed night crawlers, and these are gut loaded too as well, um, my local bait shop raises their own because a lot of people like me use them for feeding our actual fish as well so like I said some people feed fish I don't recommend feeding live fish just because of all the the complications that you can have with that with diseases and such for the most part like I said being wild caught a lot of them are pretty shy they won't necessarily eat things out of your hand I practice with night crawlers I get them to come up to my hand after you get to that point if you want to get them to eating uh, like frozen tilapia and stuff like that what you want to do is take your worms and use a tongs and you want to feed them with the tongs and get them used to that that way when you do feed them with the uh with the tongs and feed them tilapia they go crazy about it so as you can see he's going nuts he's gonna chew that i'll hand him down to him so as you can see he'll just choke that thing down chomp it up and let's grab one here for puff puff is a little more shy definitely likes to come out for food though definitely this uh this puffer here is a lot more hides a lot more often than draco does draco i've had a lot longer but they will chow down this entire night crawler that being said night crawlers obviously eat a lot of dirt and stuff like that so theoretically they make a terrible mess in the tank i did just clean this so you can't see anything but usually underneath this wood is pretty dark brown and i gotta clean it out but and i usually feed them one night crawler i figured that's enough i do about every two days i feed these guys but as you can see night crawlers make a disaster of the tank so that's another reason you also have to do weekly cleanings and stuff like that so but they are amazing fish. They do change color. As you can see, Draco's kind of turning like a brown color. But he will turn yellow as he pulls more out into the sand. Same thing with Puff here as well. So, Awesome, awesome, awesome puffers to have. They are becoming extremely common. As you can see, like I said, makes a terrible mess. But yeah, so if you guys got any questions, make sure you shoot them down in the comments. I do not know absolutely everything about these fish as with most fish keepers. It does take practice and some experience in just keeping them to kind of understanding how they work, especially some of these wild caught fish. So now Draco is going to come over here and try and steal his worm, but <laughs> beautiful fish. Yeah, he's going to come take the worm. <laughs> You can take a worm. Now these also have bred in captivity. I have not been able to determine whether they are a pair or not. It is almost impossible to sex these unless they have babies. So you'll have to kind of pay attention to that stuff if you do want to breed them. Just keep an eye on them. I let my algae grow crazy on the back glass. Sorry about that. 
But yeah, fairly simple. Definitely lots of caves. More plants would be better. I definitely do look to adding more plants to this tank, so. And there you have it. That is Dragon Puffer care for you guys. Um, like I said, if you got any questions, shoot them down in the comments. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And definitely give us a subscribe if you guys love the content we bring. If you would like more content or have any ideas of content you would like me to show, feel free to also put those down in the comments or even send me a message and I'll answer it for you. I always answer my comments and I always answer my messages. So look forward to talking to you guys in the near future. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it encourages you to think about getting a dragon puffer. Have a good one guys. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.